In this video, we're going to fix this new fuel can in four simple steps, and then we'll see how well it works when we're done. Hi, I'm John, and welcome to Backyard Maine. Anyone who's bought a gas or a diesel can in the last decade or so knows that these things are extremely difficult to use. These were obviously designed by people who have never actually used a gas can. So what's your experience with these things? Let me know in the comments down below. Today, we're gonna attempt to make this can here work as good as one of the old ones. This container here is made by Midwest Can. This one is yellow for diesel, but you can buy the exact same can in red for gasoline. So what we're doing here will work on the gas can as well. I'll link both cans in the description down below. So in my opinion, there are four issues with this fuel can. First, it has this little annoying tab that you have to depress in order to remove the cap. This isn't a big deal, but it can be difficult to do with gloves on or with cold hands. And second, the nozzle is spring loaded, and it takes a lot of force to depress the spring. This makes pouring fuel extremely difficult because you need to push the tab up against the rim of the tank that you're filling. And third, the can has no vent. The vent is actually built into the nozzle and it doesn't allow you to pour fuel quickly or smoothly. And fourth, it has this device built into the fill hole down inside the can. It looks like a filter, but I believe it's designed to mitigate any ignited vapors from making their way back in the can. But what happens with this is the fuel hits it when you're filling it and it splashes back and it causes the pump to click off. Okay, let's fix this thing so it actually works. Step one, we're going to remove this tab. So we're just going to clip this right off. Step one, complete. We'll screw that back on. That's much better. So step two, we're going to remove the O-ring from this nozzle. So how this works is you press in the red safety and then you push the plunger and you can see that the O-ring there, right there, is what seals the valve closed. So we want to remove that O-ring. We're going to put it back, but we want to remove it. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, there's the O-ring removed. So now with the O-ring removed, we can slide these two pieces apart like so. And there's that spring. We wanna take this spring and discard it. Okay, with the spring removed, we can slide these two pieces right back together like that. We'll push in on this red button again and then push that up. And now it's gonna stay open all by itself. Okay, now let's put the O-ring back on. We'll roll this O-ring right back on there. Open it back up. Step two complete. Okay, we're halfway there. Next, we're gonna vent this can. So I bought this package of vent caps. I got a package of 10 of them on Amazon. I don't know if you can see that. I'll link them in the description down below. So if you can see, there's a little bit of a, a ridge here on this seam on the middle of the can. I wanna stay away from that because that might not provide a good seal. So I marked the hole that we're going to drill just off to the right of that seam. So if you've ever drilled plastic before, you know that the drill bit can actually wind into it and uh, you could actually tear the plastic. So I'm gonna drill it in three steps. I'll start with a quarter inch and then I'll go to three eighths and then I'm going to go with the 31 64ths. Now that's the size hole that these caps say to drill. So we're gonna drill that hole and then install that cap. So we'll start with the quarter inch. I want to try to keep most of these filings outside the can. But we'll, we'll clean whatever goes in out. Of the can. Okay. I think 
everything staying on the outside. There. Easy peasy. Let's try to snap this in. Tap it in here with this. Well, that went in quite hard. I actually increased the drill hole size to half inch. So perfect. Step three is complete. Stick with me one more step and we'll try this out. Okay, I moved outside because the uh, lighting's a little better. The final step is to remove this device in the fill hole here. We'll see if we can get that guy out. I got a couple pair of needle nose pliers and a small screwdriver. So I definitely don't want it to fall into the tank because that would be a big problem. All right. I got, I don't know if you can see it here. I've got the edge kind of bent in there. in there. Grab it with another pair of pliers. I don't want to lose it. Must be some tabs in there or something. Okay, I can see one of the tabs now. Here it comes. Ugh. There it is. When the fuel goes in, it kind of fills it up because it, it can't get through quick enough and it shuts off the pump. It's really, really not ideal. So let's go fill this up with some diesel fuel and see how it works. A little splashback. How are you liking these fuel prices? Hey guys, well, I really want you to see how this pours and uh, it's going to be hard to see on the tractor and that's the only thing I have that takes diesel fuel. So I'm just going to pour it into this uh, clean five gallon bucket here and then I'll transfer it back into the can after that just so we can see how it works. Look at that pour. That's what it pours like without the vent installed. This works really good now. Um, we've taken a can that was basically useless and made it into a very functional can. And like I said before, this works the same for the Midwest gas can, same exact procedure. Hey, if you like this video, hit that like button down below. And if you haven't already, Click subscribe so you won't miss my next upload. I'll see you on the next one.